Hello, and welcome to our May month development on Aptura. Here we go, folks. Aptura is gradual but up and kicking on their delivery plan, no doubt about that. The Aptura company, known for its innovative electric vehicles, EVs, has recent updates that I can't fully document on the wiki right now due to extensive repairs needed. The current version of the wiki is outdated and requires manual fixes for over 1,000 images before we can upgrade to the latest software. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help you to learn of your preferences and enable you to receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. I am working on these repairs using home servers, but it will take some time. I've been away from this work due to a heart surgery, so progress has been slower than anticipated. Aptura is a unique, highly efficient, three-wheeled electric vehicle that seats two people. It's expected to be classified as a car in most regions. Aptura's efficiency is about three times that of comparable EVs, with a driving range between 400 kilometers, 250 miles, and 1,600 kilometers, 1,000 miles, depending on the model. The vehicle will be available in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions, with the AWD model capable of accelerating from 0 to 100 km per hour, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4 seconds, powered by in-wheel motors. The body is made of forged carbon fiber, making it extremely strong and lightweight, with a drag coefficient of 0.13 to 0.15. After it features built-in solar panels capable of generating up to 700 watts, potentially providing up to 65 km, 40 miles, of range per day in optimal sunlight. It can also be charged via an ACS connector for both AC and DC charging. The vehicle offers nearly a cubic meter, 0.9 cubic meters or 32.5 cubic feet of cargo space, accommodating large items like a surfboard or a sheet of plywood. The 1000 kilometer range version weighs around 820 kilograms, 1,800 pounds, which is significantly lighter than most passenger EVs. After it will be compatible with Kama's Open Pilot Driver Assistance System and supports the right to repair philosophy, allowing owners to service their vehicles more freely. The base price is approximately $26,900 USD, but the launch edition is priced at $33,000 USD. As of now, there are around 44,000 pre-orders, with my position being around 42,000 in the queue. Reservations cost $70 USD with a referral code or $100 without and are fully refundable. The Aptura company has an interesting history, with the current iteration being Aptura V2.0. The original company, led by Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony, collapsed after the co-founders were forced out. They later bought back the intellectual property and restarted the business. Both Fambro and Anthony are capable entrepreneurs who founded successful businesses during the interim. Switching to electric vehicles is becoming increasingly appealing, especially in countries like Australia where fuel savings can be substantial. EVs require less maintenance, further reducing costs. While some drivers might prefer the sound of an engine, many appreciate the quieter operation of EVs. They also help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and other pollutants. However, EVs might not be suitable for everyone right now. Those who need to tow heavy loads or require extensive off-road capabilities might find current EV options either limited or too expensive. Additionally, in regions where electricity is still predominantly generated from coal, the environmental benefits of EVs are less pronounced. For those who drive infrequently, waiting for the market to mature might be the best option. EVs are generally more expensive to purchase up front, though their total cost of ownership is often lower than that of internal combustion engine ICE vehicles. Incentives and tax credits vary by region and can significantly impact the overall cost. Smaller EVs tend to offer better value due to their lower battery costs. Over time, as more used EVs enter the market and battery technology improves, the affordability and practicality of EVs will increase. Range is a critical factor for many EV buyers. While adding range to an EV is expensive and reduces efficiency due to increased weight, having enough range to cover typical driving needs without frequent charging is important. A range of around 400 kilometers, 250 miles, is a minimum acceptable for many, with 600 to 800 kilometers, 375 to 500 miles, being ideal. However, actual range can vary due to factors like driving conditions and weather. For long-distance driving, reliable access to charging infrastructure is crucial, and currently, in remote regions, this can still be a challenge. Regenerative braking is a common feature in EVs, where the motors act as generators to recharge the battery during braking, extending the vehicle's range and reducing brake wear. This feature is particularly beneficial when driving downhill, as it can significantly increase the range. Many EVs offer adjustable levels of regenerative braking, and some even allow for one-pedal driving. Charging an EV can be done at home or at public charging stations. In countries with 220-240V power, home charging is straightforward and doesn't typically require special equipment. In regions with 110V power, charging is slower but still feasible. 
Most EVs come with a charger that can be plugged into a standard power outlet. Level 2 chargers are more efficient and can be purchased relatively inexpensively. Charging speeds vary, but for a typical medium-sized EV, an overnight charge can provide enough range for daily needs. For Aptera, the efficiency means that even a standard power outlet can add significant range overnight. Battery technology in EVs is continually evolving. Currently, there are several major types of batteries in use, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Lithium NNC, Nickel Manganese Cobalt, batteries are common in high-performance EVs but have shorter cycle lives and safety concerns. Lithium Iron Phosphate, Life IP04, or LFP, batteries are safer and have longer cycle lives but offer slightly lower performance. Sodium ion batteries are emerging as a cheaper alternative with good performance at low temperatures. Haptera is expected to use 811 NMC batteries, which balance performance and safety. Fast charging is available at public stations, though it can be costly and isn't always necessary for daily use. Most home charging setups are sufficient for regular needs, and public chargers are useful for longer trips. However, public charging networks can be unreliable, and not all areas have sufficient infrastructure yet. This is expected to improve over time, with new networks being planned by various consortia. The North American Charging Standard, NECS, also known as the Tesla Plug, is becoming the standard in the USA. It is a compact connector that handles both AC and DC charging, but lacks the ability to use three-phase AC. After it will use NACS, and international models may require adapters if local networks do not support the standard. Charging costs can vary widely. In places with affordable electricity, EVs can be much cheaper to operate than ICE vehicles. Off-peak tariffs can further reduce costs, and some public chargers offer free or low-cost charging. Fast charging at public stations can be expensive, sometimes reducing the cost advantage over ICE vehicles. In summary, while Aptera and other EVs offer many advantages in terms of efficiency, cost savings, and environmental benefits, they are not yet a perfect fit for everyone. Advances in technology and infrastructure will continue to improve the feasibility and attractiveness of EVs for a wider range of users. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.